How's it going, Jets fans? It's Ryan Moran and Ali Ashraf here from Fireside Jets uh, coming to you on this Friday night. Uh, a couple of days before, you know, obviously the Jets 2022 season comes to a close. And obviously it's been a frustrating five game losing streak. Um, but there is a lot to look forward to with this team. And, you know, tonight we're just going to highlight five young players who we would really like to see, you know, in, in what's essentially a meaningless game. You know, the Jets have nothing to really gain in terms of their playoff status at this point, uh, sitting at seven and nine. So, you know, we got five young players here who, you know, a couple have played a little bit at times, but we'd really like to see more than a couple of guys who've really just been put on the shelf all year who, you know, could potentially have roles on this Jets team in 2023 and beyond. So, you know, with that, we'll get going here. And we're going to start with Tony Adams, who I think is a pretty easy decision. You know, when you just look at the fact that as an undrafted rookie free agent, he came in this year and, you know, he's stuck on the 53-man roster all year, which I think is a testament to him. And, um, speaks highly and, and volumes on just how the Jets internally have to feel about him. Um, you know, you look at just his background, some of the athleticism, obviously he's got a ton of speed, uh, which I think you were able to see last week as a former corner. You know, he's got man coverage ability, which the Jets could certainly use at safety. And, you know, I think last week, you know, what you saw was just a physical, you know, willingness at working from depth downhill as a tackler. Um, he made some good plays, you know, in space, working downhill, like I said, and, um, you know, played 60 snaps last week and, you know, on the year has 74. So obviously most of his work came and he showed some good things. And we know all offseason Jets fans are going to be talking about the safety position. And it would be nice to really continue to see Adams and, you know, if he can prove himself uh, going in his second year. So, Ali, you know, how are you doing and what are some of your thoughts on Tony Adams? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Um, for Tony Adams purposes, obviously the safety position is a very um, – it's a position that we're going to be looking at the draft and the free agency-wise to improve in. Uh, because the safety has lost us a lot of games because the safety help has just not been there. Our corners are an all pro level cornerback room, but our safety is not so much. Um, so Tony Adams, obviously he should be out there, especially if he wants to fight for a position next year. I do feel like this, um, this coaching staff is going to bring more safety help in free agency or, uh, anytime during the off season to help this um, safety position. Uh, we had injuries there. We we were just not great at that position. So um, definitely Tony Adams can maybe show that he could um, be a part of this team next year. Obviously there's a lot of question marks at safety, um, but he'll have a shot. Hopefully, especially he, he being Joe Douglas's guy uh, that he brought in for undrafted. Um, he definitely is going to be looked at um, throughout the entire off season looking at the game cl uh, film. Um, he definitely sticks out. He certainly did stick out on film. There were a couple of reps he had, and it is worth noting. I meant to mention before Salah did say in his press conference earlier this week that Adams is going to get a good chunk in this game. Oh, uh, the second player here is Jamie and Sherwood, a guy who fifth round pick in 2021, has only played 155 snaps over the last two years, though, and only 16 defensively this year. But impressively enough, has 14 tackles um, on six reps that he had last week after C.J. Mosley went down. He was very active with four tackles, and I think he's a guy who in his second year has continued to show improvement um, while the limitations athletically with Sherwood are a bit you know, well-documented. I think there are still some good attributes to his game, um, the physicality, obviously, and the Jets run defense has kind of, you know, fallen off here a little bit second half of the year. And I think that's an area moving forward. He could help, um, you know, and the Jets have always really raved about his intelligence, his leadership. And I think, you know, those are some of the look, look at CJ Mosley, for example. I mean, those are a lot of the traits. He's not really a uh, high profile athlete with a ton of speed either. So I think Sherwood, you know, moving forward is definitely a guy, you know, you look at the linebacker position for the Jets going into the off season. There's tons of questions in front of him, right? CJ Mosley could be a cap casualty. The Jets, uh, salary cap space is definitely not, you know, as extraordinary as years past. And Quincy Williams and Quan Alexander are both free agents. So there's a lot of unknowns and, you know, with other, other needs. Obviously, this will be a position group. I think the Jets definitely look to address in some way. But I think at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be Sherwood's really been primarily the fourth guy, you know, his first two years. I think next year he's definitely got to be one of the top three linebackers on this Jets defense. And it'd be really nice to continue to see him, you know, get more and more reps. Um, I know Sal said this week, if CJ Mosley does want to go, they're going to let him. But I, I think either way, they're still, they got to find ways to continue to get Sherwood. I think more and more integrated on this defense. Yeah. I mean, um, when he's out there, um, he does make plays. He's the guy that it will be out there. Obviously there's question marks at the linebacker position when we coming into the, um, to the season, 
I was very questionable about the linebacker position. I didn't know what to expect from them. I thought uh, I thought that was gonna be our um not our best position on this team. I didn't even think about safety, but linebacker um turned out to be a very horrible position. But um you go through the season and you saw CJ Mosley play at a Pro Bowl level. You saw Quincy Williams flash and Quan Alexander flash all year round. Um, I do not see Quan coming back. I I think he'll get paid somewhere else to go uh, for a long term deal. Um, CJ Mosley, I could see them keeping him just because of the Pro Bowl status, the leadership status of his. Uh, but you know, some of the stuff I wouldn't be upset to leave CJ Mosley just because. I've seen a couple plays where he gave up um, on film. I've seen plays where he's not fully there. Yeah, he makes the tackles, he makes the plays, but he still makes some bonehead decisions here and there. Um, and you can also see him like jogging um, multiple times for to end of plays, and which was a big player for the other team uh, that cost us a lot of games. So, um, you know, I like to have CJ Mosley back, but um, I could definitely see if they do try to get rid of him. Quincy Williams has been phenomenal i mean he's a guy that has been rocking for us so um depending on who stays back jamie and Sherwood will get an opportunity for this team and he definitely should be out there just because they need to see what they got in him um they, they need to see if um he can keep producing the way he is um and see if he could be an actual asset for next season i'm with you all the way there the third player we're going to go with here is jeremy ruckert obviously after the Jets' top four, you know, draft picks, which were, of course, electrifying, to say the least. You know, it's Sauce Gardner, Garrett Wilson, Jermaine Johnson, and Brees Hall. I mean, the next guy is Jeremy Ruckert. And it's been pretty surprising, I think, you know, to say he's only played 27 snaps offensively this year. Um, we knew with Tyler Conklin and C.J. Uzama, and tight end is a hard position for a first-year player to come in and make immediate impact. But I think mm -hmm. – it's still been surprising just to see the, the complete lack of reps he's really had all year. And you look at the two guys drafted behind him and Max Mitchell and Michael Clemens and the way that they developed a couple of the undrafted free agents with Zonovan Knight and Tony Adams. I mean, it's been a rookie class that has come on and performed so fast that it has been surprising to really see Rucker just, like I said, kind of kept on the shelf all year. And um, he's a guy with the talent, um, the size, the physicality, of course, we know. Um, to really be a difference maker, you know, for this team and, and a guy with athletic upside to boot. So I think Rucker's a guy, even with Conklin and Uzama, I, next year he's a guy who's got to be more of a focal point in this offense. And, um, you know, at some point he needs to get experience. You know, you, you can do all the stuff on the practice field, but I think live action is where, you know, Rucker's next uh, phase of development will really take place. So what are some of your thoughts on Jeremy Rucker getting some more run down in Miami this week? Yeah, I mean, I was at the uh, um, Senior Bowl last year, and it was Jeremy Ruckert or uh, McBride, and you know who was gonna be that top guy to just take. And uh, obviously, McBride was the front runner for everyone, but Ruckert was a guy that the Jets loved since the beginning. Uh, has a cool story to it as well from the Long Island Jets fan, um, and um, he still has talent. He has a lot of talent, but he has not been able to been out there, and for a good reason, just because they paid so much for. Conklin and Uzama to be out there for us makes sense to have them play football. Uh, but Jeremy Rucker has a lot to offer. He has good blocking skills. He can catch the ball. Um, he's good um, after the catch as well. So giving him the opportunity to score points, to get more involved, is going to be important for the Jets in the long run because we can't view him. It's still um, He's still a third-round pick. So, you know, you need to use him and not have that on your resume that he was a bust and you're not using him at all um, because Jeremy Rucker still has talent. So with this offense, anywhere he could fit because the Jets need a tight end that they can trust. Um, and especially if we're depending who the quarterback is next year, they need a tight end that is consistent um, and can be with the quarterback. And Jeremy Rucker has that potential, especially how young he is and how talented he could be for the New York Jets. Absolutely. I mean, the, the upside with Ruckert is undoubtedly there. The next player, another one of those rookies I just mentioned, mentioned, Jermaine Johnson. I think a guy who, you know, transitioning from 2022 to 2023, when you look at the, this Jets team, um, you know, with Carl Lawson likely going to, as a cap casualty, getting released this offseason, you know, the Jets drafted Jermaine Johnson in the first round to come in and, you know, eventually be a big time contributor for this team. And, Surprisingly enough, over the last four weeks or so, we've really seen an uptick in, you know, Johnson's rep count week by week. And I think that should just continue to, you know, get near 40 or so snaps this week. Um, you know, a guy with the physicality, the size, we know that, and tons of athleticism as well. 
um, who's made splashes this year, you know, as both a run, run defender and as a pass rusher. Um, you know, like th- this top five defense of the Jets going into next year, you know, without likely, as I said, Carl Lawson, um, you're going to need some big shoes to fill there. And Jermaine has the youth, has the talent, the upside to really project over the long term and be a, a difference maker for this Jets defense. And uh, I think once again this week, you know, we should really continue to see just a steady rise in uh, his rep count. So what are some of your thoughts on Jermaine Johnson going into this one? Yeah, Jermaine Johnson, um, obviously we were all looking for a pass rusher in the draft and we wanted someone to finally draft a pass rusher for the New York Jets. And um, I did not think Jermaine Johnson was going to drop in the first round that far. Uh, we were all wanted him at four. We wanted him earlier. We wanted him to trade up. We wanted to do all this, but he fell to us in our laps and Jermaine Johnson still has a lot of talent. He has, um, he still could be the best pass rusher in this job. We don't know. It's going to be a hard shoes to fill with Kayvon Thibodeau out there, but um, you know, he still has a lot of talent. I think he has um, a good supporting cast with Quinton Williams there. Um, you know, there's still a lot of guys on that line that can help him grow. And Jermaine Johnson has showed flashes all year when he has the opportunity uh, to go out there. Uh, Carl Lawson hasn't had the biggest impact for us. Um, this year that we thought and we paid him for. Um, so um, that's definitely something that they're definitely going to look at if we're going to sign him back um, for more years. But with Jermaine Johnson, a second-year player, um, you know, had one year on, under his belt, um, you know, you, we should expect him to get a lot more reps next year um, and be more involved in this defense. Um, and especially in this last week, we definitely should see him running around a lot more and just see what he's got. And um, you're going up against obviously a banged up Dolphins team, but still it's going to be enough for him to show um, what he can do on the field. 100%. And the final player here, the fifth player we're going to mention is Denzel Mims. Um, the guy who the last two years now for Jets fans has just been such a you know hot topic as much as anyone on this football team, even up there with Zach Wilson, honestly. And I think we've really exhausted every last Avenue, but the, the important points to really note, I mean, Corey Davis and Braxton Berrios could both be cut this off season, you know, with the Jets cap strapped and th- there's about 15 and a half million dollars or so there that they could free up between those two guys with minimal, you know, dead cap ramifications to boot. So you're looking at, you know, aside from Garrett Wilson and Elijah Moore, obviously Jeff Smith is a restricted free agent going into next year. There's tons of questions. And Mims, even after this Sunday still has one year left on his contract. And I, I think it's, we really got to find out what he is, right? I feel like we still don't know. Um, last year was such a lost year, but then this year you really saw him. It, it seemed like went over the coaching staff to the point where, you know, he kind of upseated Jeff Smith as that fifth guy and, you know, was on the active roster, has been averaging about 20 or so snaps a week pretty consistently, even with Wilson, Moore, Corey Davis, Berrios. So um, I, I think, you know, with Mims, the size has always been there. The athletic ability has always been there. Um, he showed some of that potential as a rookie. But these last two years, it's just there hasn't been enough. And he's obviously, you know, started to put some things together this year. And um, moving into next year, I mean, I think, you know, not necessarily as the third receiver, but in in a prime depth role. I mean, he's potentially poised next year to, you know, have a role in this offense. And I think he's another guy, you know, this final game here who, you know, it would certainly be nice to see, you know, continued reps and, you know, just uh, him continuing to build his confidence, you know, with some more opportunities in the passing game. Um, especially if, um, you know, if the Jets get rid of Corey Davis, um, Denzel Mims was pretty much Corey Davis' his backup um, at his position. So um, keeping Mims around, I mean, if we don't try to figure out what Mims is, I mean, that's a waste of, what, two years of LaFleur trying to figure out what's going on with him, how to fix him, with all the drama that was regarding Mims not being there um, and all – all the drama that was involving him. He still can play ball. We all know that. Um, but how much is he going to be the wide receiver three or wide receiver four? We don't know because there are still so many question marks at the wide receiver position because obviously Garrett Wilson's there. You're number one. You still got Elijah Moore. And then after that, you're going to figure out what's going on with the rest. You know, Braxton Berrios has not been good, good in special teams the last couple of weeks. Um, and definitely we de- we signed him last year, but um, is definitely something to think about because he did not play well at all. Um, with Corey Davis, he's always injured. Um, you know, he there's drop passes, there's different things, but Corey Davis also has those moments where he makes those plays um, and comes through for us. For, for Denzel Mims' sake, um, if he can go out with the banger a little bit in this last game and show what he can is capable of doing with Joe Flacco as quarterback, um, you know, it will show up big time because um, 
you know, his production also revolves about the quarterback position, and our quarterback position has been very on and off, and that's the reason we're not in the playoffs this year is because of our quarterback position. It's just been so whack that we can't hit our receivers, so I uh, give them opportunities to do it, and that thing, the same thing goes with Denzel Mims. He's gotten opportunities to make catches. He drops them, um, but he, it's not enough opportunities to judge him yet. So um, I think the next year is pro- a big time for him. I think he'll be in training camp with us and see if, if he can make that roster. Uh, so, But I think the Jets are going to be making a lot of moves at the wide receiver position. Well said. It's definitely going to be a pivotal couple months ahead for Denzel Mims. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this one, Jets fans. Obviously, 2022 season coming to an end in Miami this Sunday against the Dolphins. Uh, you know, like and subscribe, leave any comments below on whether you agree or disagree with the five players we mentioned, you know, who are some others that you're potentially looking at uh, getting more reps in this final game. So I hope you all enjoyed this episode, Jets fans, and we'll catch you soon.